Persona 5 Strikers is more a sequel than any of the previous Persona spin-offs, but doesn't live up to those ambitions. Fans of the initial game that simply want more of this world, whatever shape that may take, might find themselves satisfied on that simple fact alone. Though what made Persona 5 truly great is sorely lacking. Its stripped back nature doesn't take itself far enough for newcomers either. Those intimidated by the density and length of Persona 5 will still feel the same way about Strikers. All of the fantastic visual and audio elements are still there, and its story goes in some interesting directions, but it all feels stagnant compared to the epic tale told in the original game. Persona 5 was a game that was not only able to hold the attention of players for close to or even over 100 hours, but it told a story so compelling that many wished to play it over again from the very beginning immediately. With the main character Joker being a fish out of water that slowly grew his social circle over time, peeling back the mystery of his own past and the fantastical world he and his friends found themselves confronted with, it was a game that begged to be played, and for the most part justified its ludicrous length. While Strikers is around a third of the time, its incentives to continue playing dry up relatively quickly. The enigma surrounding the return of palaces, an otherworldly manifestation of people's subconscious, is a fairly interesting plot, but it's the personal side, which was the driving factor of the original game, that is lacking. The characters that the Phantom Thieves dive into the palaces of aren't nearly as interesting or well-developed as the ones in the first game, and the desires that define their subconscious dimensions are surface level in comparison. The Phantom Thieves themselves are as well-written as ever, but having them fully formed from the jump goes to show how great them coming together in Persona 5 was. Without that journey, it's simply a lot of witty banter and poking of buttons that happens amongst the group. This extends to the gameplay, which features a lot of different elements from the original game, but drops the incredibly popular social stats and links. As such, playing as Joker is like existing as a fly on the wall for the story, the character's interjections not holding nearly the same weight. There are a couple of new cast members that join the team. I don't imagine they'll be anyone's favorites, however, as they're mostly treated as ways to service the plot rather than fully fleshed out additions to the thieves. Combined with the fact that Strikers serves as a sequel to Persona 5 rather than 5 Royal, lacking the new popular characters that endeared fans to the Royal Redux, this spin-off feels rather thin. The turn-based gameplay of Persona 5 has been replaced with the Musou gameplay of Koei Tecmo's Warriors series, which is one of the main reasons why Strikers is a shorter affair than its predecessor. The game impressively translates a lot of the combat elements from the original game to the spin-off, and there's a surprising amount of attacks and abilities that the player can pull off that feel true to the spirit of the series. Another recent Musou game did something similar. In The Legend of Zelda Age of Calamity, nearly all of the tricks up Link's sleeve from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild were brought over to the spin-off prequel. Age of Calamity is an example of how to tightly integrate those features together, and it only highlights the failure of Strikers to do so. Whether you're mashing the attack button quickly, swapping out characters with a baton pass, or dealing big damage with the character's persona abilities, there's very little strategy to any of it outside of conserving your SP for any advanced attacks. The turn-based combat of Persona 5 might have dragged out innocuous battles longer than they needed to be, but it made every conflict feel decisive. One wrong move could prove disastrous for the squad. No such threat exists in Strikers exacerbated by how often the game hands you a lifeline. Most battles can be exited in a matter of seconds if the player feels the tide turning against them, and dungeons have incredibly frequent checkpoints that allow them to leave and regroup at no cost. In Persona 5, choosing to tackle a palace required careful planning, and once you were stuck in it, the only way through was forward. The dungeons and strikers offer so little challenge that I did not feel compelled to regularly buy new items or equip new gear. Persona 5 Strikers is as flashy as Persona 5, featuring the same gorgeous artwork and animations, great dialogue, and just as brilliant music. It unfortunately lacks the meat on the bone that made it such an addicting experience to its loyal fanbase, which subsequently provides little incentive for newcomers to play it despite its egregious length being drastically cut down.